Every year, as many as 33 million people in the United States suffer from health problems caused by unsafe food prepared in homes, schools, delis, and restaurants. Many people experience severe health problems, and as many as 9,000 die from foodborne illness each year. In addition to the pain and suffering from foodborne illness, many persons, both customers and employees, lose income and time from work and other productive activities. They also pay the high costs of medical care. Restaurants often lose business and their reputations when a foodborne outbreak occurs. Some outbreaks result in costly lawsuits and even in restaurants being closed. Nearly all of these illnesses can be prevented through correct handling of foods. Most foodborne illnesses are caused by failure to wash hands thoroughly, failure to heat or cool foods adequately, cross-contamination. The remainder of this program will review what food handlers can do to assure the food we eat is safe. Disease-causing germs are often present on uncooked foods and in the intestines of infected food workers. If food handling practices are poor, these germs can infect customers who eat the foods. Germs like hepatitis A and other viruses, bacteria and parasites may be present in human intestines and are often causes of foodborne illness. Proper hand washing by food handlers is essential in preventing such illnesses. Good hand washing consists of washing thoroughly with soap and warm water. Using a fingernail brush is strongly recommended. Dry hands with a disposable paper towel or an air dryer. If you find that soap or towels are not available, report this to your manager. Hand washing must be done when arriving at work, before handling food. Always wash hands after using the bathroom. This is the most important time to wash. If you sneeze or cough into your hands, wash them. It may be preferable to sneeze into your elbow or shoulder. Wash hands before and after touching raw meats and poultry. It is also important to wash hands before handling foods which are not going to be cooked, like salad ingredients, cut fruits, cold appetizers, submarine sandwiches, and cold cuts. Unsafe food temperatures are another major cause of foodborne illness. A thermometer is your best defense. Poultry should be cooked to 165 degrees Fahrenheit. Ground beef should be cooked to 155 degrees Fahrenheit. Or until it is no longer pink in the center and juices run clear. Undercooked burgers have caused serious illnesses and deaths from bacteria such as certain types of E. coli, Salmonella, and Campylobacter. Pork and ham should be cooked to 155 degrees Fahrenheit. Eggs should be cooked to 145 degrees Fahrenheit. Or, pasteurized egg products should be used. Most other foods should be heated to 140 degrees Fahrenheit or above. Caution! Many foods grow harmful bacteria when left at room temperature. Foods that require advanced preparation and are to be served later must either be kept hot at 140 degrees Fahrenheit or above or cold at 41 degrees Fahrenheit or below. Bacteria in foods such as rice can develop toxins which cause illness when eaten. Foods need to be cooled down to 70 degrees within two hours and to 41 degrees Fahrenheit within four hours or less. Two methods to rapidly cool foods are an ice bath and a frozen paddle. Use only shallow pans, no more than three inches deep, for cooling foods in the refrigerator. Leave uncovered until cool. 
Refrigerator temperatures should be at or below 41 degrees Fahrenheit to prevent growth of bacteria. Foods such as refried beans, meats, poultry, and pasta, if left at room temperature too long, can grow bacteria in large numbers. These bacteria can cause illness in those who eat them, but reheating kills most of these bacteria. Rapidly reheat previously cooked foods to 165 degrees Fahrenheit. Stir to reheat food evenly. Caution, reheat using only appropriate equipment. Most steam tables are not intended to reheat foods because they take too long and don't reach high enough temperatures. Another area of concern is cross-contamination. Cross-contamination occurs when germs from one type of food contaminate another type of food. Begin by washing or rinsing fruits and vegetables before cutting. Make up a sanitizing solution of bleach and water, and to be sure the solution is 50 parts per million, check it periodically with a test strip. Clean and sanitize cutting boards and utensils before preparing foods which don't require further cooking. Use a different cutting board for raw vegetables and fruit than the one you use for meats and poultry. Store raw meats and poultry below foods which will not be cooked, like fruits and vegetables. Some health departments require the use of disposable gloves or utensils with foods which are not going to be cooked, such as salads, fruits, and cold sandwiches. In other words, they prohibit direct contact with these foods if they are not cooked following handling. Always wash hands after bathroom use. And then put on a fresh pair of gloves. Even if gloves are not required, they are strongly recommended when handling cold foods that won't be cooked later. Gloves or finger cuts should be used if you have infected cuts or wounds on your hands. Gloves are not usually needed for handling hot foods. Tell your supervisor if you are feeling ill. Never touch foods when you have diarrhea or other signs of intestinal illness. Let's review the basics. Wash hands thoroughly and use a fingernail brush often. Wear gloves or use utensils for handling foods which will not be heated after handling. Cook foods thoroughly. Hold hot foods at 140 degrees Fahrenheit or higher. Cool foods rapidly to 41 degrees Fahrenheit or below. Reheat foods rapidly to 165 degrees Fahrenheit. Prevent cross-contamination by cleaning and sanitizing cutting boards and utensils. Do not touch food if you have an intestinal illness. Finally, it pays to serve your customers safe, good quality foods. You play a key role in making this happen.